Mike, Indiana plays on Martin Luther King Day on Monday. What's the significance of playing on that day for you? Andy is special. Dr. King was special. That's the only word I can use for him. And I say that because you think about this, Andy. He protested. He marched for equal rights for all people, not just black people, for all people. And he lost his life protesting and marching for equal rights. You know, I, you know, I think back, I was 10 years old when Dr. King died. And I think back my parents and some of the things they spoke to me about um, sitting in the back of the bus, um, drinking out of different water fountains, not being able to stay in hotels, couldn't eat in certain restaurants, couldn't have a voice to vote. Think about all of those things. And Dr. King fought for all those things, man, and lost his life doing it. I look at myself as a head coach at Indiana University, it wouldn't, I wouldn't be sitting here today if it wasn't for Dr. King and some of the things that he stood for. So nothing but love and respect. I mean, we're still praising Dr. King today. He has this, this day, you know, as his day. That's how special he was. How do you look at the way college basketball and also especially the NBA have embraced MLK Day as a day to celebrate, to play games on, but to not just make it a holiday, but it, it, you know, make it sure that everyone knows what this day means. And that's why we're playing here, to acknowledge his importance in human history, not just American history. Well, I think we all do it because of what he stood for. Again, it wasn't just a Black thing. You know, I think everybody benefited from it. And I think we need more people like that. I mean, Andy, times are tough, man. You know, with racism and all the things that are going on in our society, man. It's, it's nasty, it's vicious is what I call it. But at the end of the day, when you can look back and, and grasp a hold of somebody that powerful, that special, that, can, that was able to create nothing but love and unity, man, come on. You know, that's why we're doing it today because it was so special. And it's a shame he had to lose his life over it, but I think it made a lot of us a lot better. I truly believe that. So you were only nine, 10, uh, as you're sort of realizing maybe his importance uh, in the black community and in, 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 in the United States. What are your memories of the way your family spoke about him, either watching speeches or e even after he was murdered, just the, the reverence that was, was, was uh, you know, basically shown toward him in those hours, days, weeks, months, and years after? Well, my family, you know, I'm from a big family of 12 brothers and sisters, man. And you know, you think back, I think back a lot of times to those days where we all cried that day. You know, my mother and father was so embraced and entrenched into his belief and the things that he was trying to get across to everybody. You know, again, I keep saying not just black people, to everybody. It doesn't, to understand that we need each other, man. And my parents were so deep in, boy, that they cried that day in front of that TV when we got the news that he was assassinated, just like they cried when Kennedy died and was assassinated. You know, you know, I mean, if you're a good human being <laughs> and you thinking rationally, I mean, those people were trying to, to do the right thing for our country and you shouldn't lose your life over that. If you're not, if you rationally 
think in the right way and you're a good human being, you don't kill somebody for standing up saying, I'm trying to help people have equal rights. What's wrong with that, man? So it was a tough time in my household when Dr. King was assassinated. It really was. One last thing, Mike, obviously, you know, I don't expect you to speak on what's going on across the country, but just within your sphere of Indiana basketball, uh, the basketball community, in the last two years, obviously, there's been uh, an awakening, hopefully, uh, since George Floyd's murder of looking beyond yourself to try to reach even more equality. Um, where do you think we are within the sports world, uh, you know, almost two years after really the start of a renewed movement? No, I think the sports world is in a, a great place, but this thing is bigger than sports, man, to me. It's always been bigger than sports. Sports is like a, a, a pimple on an elephant. You know, I mean, I'm looking at the mass. I'm looking at our society. You know, that's what's scary, you know, in terms of where we are as a society. You know, we don't treat people right. We really don't. And that's sad, you know, I mean, because it doesn't take much to treat people right across the board. It's just, just, it doesn't. And I think if we can learn to do that, and get along with one another, black or white, you know, don't matter what color you are, blue, green, we got to work with each other, man, across the board to make this thing work, man. Because if we don't, Andy, you ain't going to see it in your lifetime and I won't live long enough to see it in my lifetime. That's how, that's how bad it is at times, man. And we got to get better. Mike, I appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right.